From the early days when very few people knew about the web to three years later when a lot of people knew about the web, uh, where in that steady exponential growth would anybody say that the web actually happened? There's nowhere. It was an explosion. The explosion is still happening. The semantic web is in the same f phase that there are. If you talk to certain groups of people, they're very excited, completely won over, they're all working using semantic web technology. Other uh, areas, they've heard about it, they've got it on their agenda, but they haven't really got, had time to, to go and do it. But on the other hand, you can see that it's got this exponential, um, that it's locked into this exponential growth pattern. The web, in the first place, was something which solved a particular frustration I had. It scratched an itch that we, you know, I knew that we could make life a whole lot easier here. The, the web of data, semantic web, same thing, that the frustration that I can't pull that data and pull other data and then connect them and see, oh, that's, when did these, how did, when did these publications chronologically fit in with these events? Uh, or where are all my friends compared to all the places I like to drink coffee? How, you know, where's the nearest coffee place to, the, to a friend that I want to take out to lunch? That's taking information which is out there in a form that can be reused and looked at from a different point of view, um, combined, queried, sliced and diced, all the things that we do, for example, when we download bank statements into a piece of software which allows us to deal with our finances, then we summarize them, we graph them, we see how we do from year to year, we do pull out our taxes from them, we do all kinds of things, lots of different views, and we have software which is very specifically dealt, written to allow us to do lots of the sorts of things we expect to do with financial data. So now the challenge of putting data on the web in general is that this data is going to be about all kinds of things. So I'm going to want to pull out my financial data and then look at it in the calendar view so that I can see what I was doing when I wrote that check. And then maybe I'll need to figure out to do that. I'll, I'll need to look, put in some photographs. And having pulled in some photographs, I'll be able to go from the photograph to who is in the photograph through my address book, maybe through the organizational structure of their company or the project they're working on from one domain into another. And then it's projection of that onto, well, if, I, I, if this need, what about all these other people who deal with a lot more data, who have much more serious questions to ask on Monday, on Monday morning uh, in the life sciences? It's, uh, there's a lot of excitement about using uh, about semantic web data. Uh, I don't want the next serious emergency to happen until the doctors and the emergency technicians and the rescue crews have got the ability to look instantly at all the data involved, even the data which was not part of the... Uh, the study of the diseases, it was the study of air traffic. You know, but I want them to be able to, when they study this disease, to go and look at air travel patterns. I want them to go, be, go and look at nutrition patterns. I want them to be able to pull in whatever data they need in order to be able to, so, uh, to stop the virus before it's too late. The data web, like the document web, involves uh, standards. Document web as HTML, the cascading style sheets, and so on. All these things are enabled by open, royalty-free standards. Same on the data web. Whereas you represent a document in HTML, you represent data in RDF. RDF is to data as HTML is to documents. That's been defined for several years now. And for some uh, companies that, that are using semantic web technology internally, they're getting their heart, oh, we can move so much faster. We've got, this is very flexible technology. Uh, if we'd have been using conventional Technology, database technology, we wouldn't be able to change our business model so quickly. We wouldn't be able to change the sort of data that we're carrying about our products and our customers so quickly. Um, for scientists, the aha moment will be when they have read about a paper that they were interested in. They were curious about exactly how the person got to that result, and then they found a link from the paper to the data, and then they found they could, they could just reproduce the processing of the results immediately. I think that's the, that's the step which a lot of funding agencies are pushing towards. I know uh, certainly 
in the U.S. pushing to say, if you're getting, if we're funding you, you have to put your data out there. Uh, you should put it out there in a standard format because we paid you to make the data, and you may have published a paper which, based on some results that you noticed, somebody else may want to do a very much of a transverse cut through your data and everybody else's data. Uh, we need to be able to get the reuse of the data which we funded. So I think that's going to be essential for things like being able to respond to disasters effectively, being able to respond to new diseases uh, that hit the planet, uh, and, being, and the big challenges like um, Alzheimer's, AIDS, and cancer, which involve such a lot of information from so many fields being correlated. And uh, the person who has the brainwave who makes the next step forward, being able to get hold of the data that he or she needs to be able to make that step. What we're looking for from the web of data is, in a way, what we've found from the web of documents is a sea change. What we're, uh, when we started publishing on the doc documents on the web, we were publishing documents on the web, so you could go and read some documents. But because you could do it with a click, because a, data, a hypertext link could go to absolutely any document on the web, independent of who that person works for or where they live and what, what language they speak, because that hypertext link is so powerful, there was a sea change in how businesses worked. There was a sea change in how people ran their lives, how they booked flights, of how they ran their families. There's, there were these sea changes in how the people keep in touch with each other. And social, large, so, social systems change, and things which just could not be done become possible. With data, the sea change may be even greater. Because not only are we making, allowing people to be able to access stuff more effectively from across the globe, be able to get at stuff which they haven't been able to get at before, but because we, this is data which can be manipulated, we can put machine power into filtering it down and then allowing them to join that to other summary data to maximize the human's ability to see co the correlations or the trends. It may be that the sea change will be greater. It may be that we'll find that with this sea of data, we will just be able to solve some problems that we haven't been able to solve before. We'll look back and we'll realize that it would have just needed a million clerks <laughs> plugging away at the web reading or reading, reading science papers, for example, to have ever tr stand a chance of, uh, of being able to figure out that, that, to pull in that correlation, which was the clue to making that very serious step forward. So, I suppose I've got huge hopes for the long term. And I think a lot of the people who are driven by this manic web, in the medium term, yes, we're looking to see enterprise move more efficiently, but also in the back of our minds, there's a very, very exciting long term. Mm -hmm.